In this video, we're going to have a look at the parabola in turning point form when it has also translated horizontally. In grade 10, we focus on the transformations indicated by the A value and the constant at the end of the equation. Now we're going to add another transformation by changing the equation as follows. Here you can see that the A value is still multiplied to the x squared and the constant value is still added to the end but is now simply named Q. The new transformation that we're going to have a look at is the plus P that is added to the x which is then squared. Once again we start with our mother graph which is the equation y is equal to x squared. We already know that adding a constant value right at the end moves the graph vertically upwards or downwards. Let's see what happens if we add a constant value to x inside the brackets. Here you can see that even though we added a positive value to x, the graph moved in the negative direction on the x-axis. Similarly, when we add a negative value to x, the graph will move in the positive direction on the x-axis. Here you can see that for the first time, the coordinate of the turning point and that of the y-intercept differ because the graph also moved horizontally. Let's also add a Q value. Here you can see that the coordinate of the turning point is at 2 and 1, and that of the y-intercept is at 0, 5. From this, we can also make the conclusion that the coordinate of the turning point is already visible in the equation. You simply take the p-value with the opposite sign and the q-value. When the graph moves horizontally, the axis of symmetry should move with the graph. In this case, our axis of symmetry is on the turning point, and that means on the line x is equal to 2. So we can also make the conclusion that the axis of symmetry always lies on the line x is equal to minus the p-value. So we have now seen that when you are given an equation in the turning point standard form, you can immediately determine the turning point and that will be minus pq. You can also say that the axis of symmetry is on the line x is equal to minus p. In this case, you cannot see the y-intercept and then you'll have to determine it by substituting x with 0 and solving y. The x-intercepts can still be determined by substituting y with 0 and then solving x. Let's have a look at how to sketch a graph like this. Example, sketch each of the following functions and clearly indicate the intercepts with the axes as well as the turning point. In our first example, we have only one transformation and that is the minus p. This minus 3 indicates that the graph moves 3 units to the right on the horizontal axis. So this graph will have a y-intercept and an x-intercept which will also be the turning point because the graph did not move up or down vertically. Even though we can't see the y-intercept in the equation, we can determine it by changing the x value in the equation to 0 and then you will see that the y-intercept is at the point 0, 9. To determine the x-intercept, we can change y to 0 in the equation and then solve x. But I've already mentioned that the x-intercept in this case will be the same as the turning point. And the turning point can be seen in the equation by taking the p-value with the opposite sign and the q-value, which in this case is 0. So when we get to drawing this graph, there will be two coordinates indicated. Firstly, the y-intercept, which is at 0, 9, and then the x-intercept, which is also the turning point, at 3, 0. And lastly, our axis of symmetry is on the turning point on the line x is equal to 3. In example 3, we have three transformations. 
Firstly, the minus 2 indicates that the graph has reflected around the x-axis and now forms a sad face. Next, we have the plus 1 in the bracket and this indicates that the graph moves one unit in the negative direction on the x-axis. And lastly, the plus 8 indicates that the graph moves 8 units upwards and this means that in the end, this graph will have a turning point, two x-intercepts and a y-intercept. Remember that we can read the turning point from the equation by taking the p-value with the opposite sign and then the q-value as it is. To determine the y-intercept, I'm once again going to substitute the x-value in the equation with a zero and then simplify. So the y-intercept will be at 0, 6. And for the x-intercepts, I'm again going to substitute the y-value with 0, and now you'll have to do some algebra. I'm going to choose to firstly divide by minus 2 right through the equation to get rid of the minus 2 in front of the bracket. Then squaring the bracket will give me x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus the 4, which will give me a trinomial of x squared plus 2x minus 3. There are two x-intercepts, and I will determine them by factorizing this trinomial. This means the x-intercepts will be at x is equal to minus 3, or at x is equal to 1. When sketching the graph and you have not received an accurate system of axes, it's definitely easier to first draw the parabola and then add the coordinates. Here we have x-intercepts at minus 3 and then also at 1. The y-intercept is at 6 and the turning points coordinate will be minus 1 and 8 which also indicates our axis of symmetry, which will lie at x is equal to minus 1.